Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk to you about why gas log fireplaces are bad news. Yep, you heard that right. I am not a fan of gas log fireplaces. The short and bitter version of this video is don't put one in your house, and if you're buying a house that already has one, you should really consider getting rid of it and putting something else in there. So to understand why I'm not a fan of these, first we need to define what it is that I'm talking about. There's kind of three different versions of what people commonly refer to as a gas fireplace. First, you got the gas log, and that's what I'm talking about today. It's basically, you take a wood-burning masonry fireplace, you stick a gas line in there, and then you have a UL listed, it better be UL listed, you put in a UL listed gas log. It's gonna be UL listed to standard Z2160. It defines a bunch of rules for it. And you know, it's, it's fairly safe. It's gonna be a device that has a flame proving device. You're gonna have a pilot light. And if the pilot goes out, you're not gonna have gas flooding this appliance. That's all part of the listing. But you know, it's essentially a, a stick of pipe with a whole bunch of holes in it and when gas comes out, it gets ignited, and then you have these fake logs sitting on top of it, and it's a lot like having a real wood-burning fire, except your fuel is natural gas versus wood. And otherwise, you know, you, you look at them, and some people can't even tell the difference, from a distance at least, between this and a wood-burning fire. And, you know, I, I will admit, they are a lot more realistic looking, than your traditional gas fireplace because you don't have a glass front. It's all just wide open. I mean, you, you hear a nice whoosh when the things first turn on. You could technically roast marshmallows over these things. I mean, they, they do look really nice. So there is the ambience. By code, they're technically referred to as a decorative gas appliance. So that's, that's what I'm talking about today. And then the two other types of fireplaces, you're gonna have a gas insert where you take the existing firebox opening for a traditional masonry fireplace and then you insert, as the name implies, you insert a gas fireplace. It's, it's a fireplace that's meant to be installed in an existing fireplace opening. It's gonna have its own vent system. You're gonna have combustion air brought directly into the system, usually on any modern one today. And then you'll have the exhaust gases brought out through a separate pipe. And you usually have a single terminal at the top that has an intake and an exhaust kind of built into a single terminal. That would be a gas insert. And then the traditional gas fireplace is gonna be a device that gets installed pretty much anywhere. You just need to have a vent that goes out of the house. You could have a vent that goes straight up through the roof, or you could have a vent that goes out the side of the house. And you'll usually find those in living rooms or basement living rooms, family rooms. Sometimes you'll have them in master bedrooms. You have them all over houses, but those have really taken over in, uh, they've taken the place of traditional wood burning fireplaces and you find them all over the house. So those are the three versions, but then even within the last two that I mentioned, the insert or the traditional gas fireplace, there's two versions of those. And there's the type that's considered a decorative gas appliance where it's there to be pretty and that's it. It'll kick off tons of heat, but it's not listed as a heater. Those are gonna be built to ANSI standard Z2150. And then there's another type where it's built to ANSI standard Z2180, no, 2188. And those are listed as heaters. So you can actually have them connected to a thermostat. Now, if it's, if it's the other type, you're technically not supposed to connect it to a thermostat. I've asked several gas fireplace professionals about this. What's the difference between these two? And as a home inspector, what do I need to look out for? And the answer I've gotten from everybody is the difference between these two is the standard that you'll find stamped on the inside. You get it? Like they're saying there's no difference between the two. <laughs> Surely there is a difference. I mean, 
but apparently only somebody at ANSI knows what this is. All the professionals I've talked to, nobody even knows what the difference is. Technically, one is not supposed to be connected to a thermostat, but what are the, what are the effects of this? Nothing, as far as I know, as far as anyone has ever been able to tell me. So uh, those are the different types that you're gonna have out there, different types of gas appliances that we all kind of loosely call fireplaces. The one I'm talking about today is the gas log. I'm not a fan of those. And the reason being is that for these things to operate safely, they are using the existing fireplace, the existing chimney, existing flue that you had for a wood burning fireplace. But if you accidentally turn this thing on and you're running it, well, let's, let's talk about wood. If you accidentally build a wood fire and you don't open the damper, what's gonna happen? Your house is going to fill with smoke really quickly. I mean, it's just going to be pouring into your house. People are going to be choking. You're going to fix it really quickly. But what happens if you do the same thing with a gas log? Nothing. Nothing happens. Nobody knows about it. You're going to have carbon monoxide pumping into your house, but it's invisible and you don't smell it. So it, this could be a deadly situation. And for that reason, these things are not quite as safe. Now, of course, if you follow the manufacturer's installation instructions, which are going to be in accordance with ANSI Z2160, they tell you that the damper has to be permanently made open or you need to have a clip installed in the damper to make sure that it can't fully close. It's, it's this damper clip. And if you read the installation instructions from a manufacturer, I'm I'm calling it out right now that these things are just about impossible to follow. They're going to talk about the chimney height and the firebox opening and then the net free area that needs to be created by that damper and the damper clip. And it, it's like the installer needs to figure all of this out, measure the height of the chimney, calculate all of this, and then figure out where that damper needs to be for this to be installed safely. And I'm just going to say it right now, nobody has ever done that. I've looked at so many of these and don't tell me somebody did the calculation to figure out how that damper clip was actually installed. I mean, you get an installer and they're going to put that damper clip on there, they will fasten it, they'll adjust the screw to what seems to be good and call it done. That's how they all are. Now, okay, I'm not saying all. I'm sure there's some people who do it right, but the, the vast majority of installers got to be doing these things wrong. I've tested a lot of these as a home inspector where I turn on that fireplace and I close the damper as far as it will close with that damper clip in place. And every time we have a bunch of exhaust gas pouring back into the home, it is never enough. There could be situations where it's enough. I just haven't seen one of those situations. So I think there's a real danger in the exhaust gas coming back into the home from people forgetting to open their damper fully. Now, Let's say you do have the damper clip properly installed. It's a big opening. Even with the damper fully closed, it's a pretty large opening. Or you have the damper fully removed. Well, now there's going to be an energy penalty to pay. You're going to have tons of warm air leaving the house through that big flue all winter long. Or if, if uh, the house is sucking enough air in, you have enough appliances exhausting and you need air to come back in, you might have cold air dumping back down into the fireplace. Or if it's a basement fireplace, it's a lot more likely that you're gonna have cold air just falling down and filling your house with cold air, making, making the basement really cold. Huge energy penalty to pay. How do you fix it? Well, you don't have a gas log fireplace. That's the fix. And that's why as, as a home inspector, when I come ac across gas log fireplaces, I usually don't have anything nice to say about them. I say either it's not safe or you're gonna have a big energy penalty. So my advice is consider upgrading to something else. I am a big fan of traditional gas fireplaces, either the inserts or the freestanding ones or the ones that get installed in the wall. Now in this case, you would be installing an insert. Love those. Have one in my existing house in the first floor and in the basement. My family uses these all the time during the winter, especially the one in the basement. I mean, if you're in a Minnesota house, I don't know why, but the, the heating systems are never set up quite properly and those basements always get cool. 
So when my, when my family is down in the basement, that gas fireplace is on just about all winter. And it's great. It's a nice seed source. So that's all I have to say about gas log fireplaces. Sorry, gas log fireplace manufacturers. I apologize. I, I hate to trash a product, but you know what? You all probably make inserts too, and I'm telling people to buy those. So uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.